Clickjacking. Clickjacking is when you click something, your device gets hijacked. Imagine a girl looking for the latest movie releases, so she's browsing a pirated movie site, and then she clicks on a button that looks like a play movie and download button. But actually, a hacker can put an invisible button on top of that play button, like permission to turn on your webcam and microphone. Now the attacker can watch and record her every move without her knowing. Even the hacker can either use it for blackmail, sell it online, or keep it as a personal collection. Phishing. Phishing is when a hacker pretends to be someone trustworthy to trick people into giving up sensitive info. For example, you might get an email that looks exactly like it's from your bank and asks you to click a link to fix the problem with your account, but the link actually takes you to a fake site that looks real. Once you enter your username and password, the hacker gets them instantly, and then the hacker can sell your data on the dark web or do something like identity theft. Identity theft. Identity theft is when a hacker steals someone's personal information and pretends to be them. Let's say a hacker finds your full name, address, date of birth, and phone number with a phishing method. With just that, they can open a credit card in your name or apply for loans. Since the info matches, the loan gets approved, and the real person has no idea until debt collectors start coming. Credential Stuffing Credential stuffing is when hackers take stolen usernames and passwords and try them on another platform. Because many people reuse the same login details everywhere, a hacker may try the same thing on your PayPal or Netflix. If it's the same or similar, they're in without ever needing to hack anything directly. But if you have a different password for each account, this kind of attack becomes useless. DDoS attack. DDoS attack is when a hacker floods a website or server with so much fake traffic that it crashes. Imagine a government website usually gets thousands of visitors a day, but suddenly gets millions out of nowhere not from real people, but from thousands of botnet devices across the world. So yeah, of course, the server will slow down and crash. Brute force. Brute force is a method of guessing a password by testing every possible combination until one works. For example, someone might run an automated script that rapidly tries thousands of common passwords to break into your device or email account. The attack works purely by trial and error, so it won't work if your password is unique and complex. And fortunately, many systems now have protections like account lockouts or delays after multiple failed attempts. Eavesdropping. Eavesdropping is when a hacker secretly listens in on a communication between two parties to steal sensitive information. For example, imagine you're at a coffee shop using the free unencrypted public Wi-Fi to send an important email to your boss. Unbeknownst to you, a hacker sitting nearby has hacked the Wi-Fi, so the hacker can easily access any data being sent over the network. Man in the middle. Man in the middle is like eavesdropping, but instead of just listening, the hacker can also change what's being said. Imagine you send a harmless text to someone you know, but the hacker intercepts your message and changes it, so they get the edited message instead. A terrifying example can be a seller discussing a purchase through an email with a client, and when the seller gives his bank account, the hacker changes the message to include his own bank account, so the hacker is the one who gets the payment. Typo squatting. Typo squatting is the practice of using misspelled popular websites to install malware into someone's device. Let's say someone carelessly types the wrong Google domain. When he lands there, it might auto-install cryptojacking malware. It hijacks your CPU and silently mines crypto for the hacker in the background. And in this context, such a method is actually more effective than stealing passwords to do identity theft. Because not everyone on the internet is accessing their bank account or PayPal. They could be just browsing randomly but crypto jacking can utilize everyone's device regardless of what they're doing. Insider threat. An insider threat happens when someone within an organization abuses their access to cause harm. It can be an IT employee who just got fired, but he still has the login credentials. Out of revenge, he logs into the system remotely and plants a hidden script like logic bomb that deletes important files after a certain period of time. Social engineering. Social engineering is a manipulation tactic where the hacker exploits human psychology instead of a technical vulnerability. For example, a hacker may drop a few USB drives in a company parking lot. After he left, an employee accidentally found it and saw it had tags that said, salary bonus 2025 or confidential HR reports. So out of curiosity, he plugs it into his work computer. But actually, the USB silently runs a malware program that installs a worm malware. Once infected, it can multiply itself and spreads automatically to every connected device in the office to steal information. 
SQL injection, many websites store your usernames and login passwords inside a database. And to get the data from the database, websites use a language called SQL. Unfortunately, some websites aren't properly managed, so hackers can hack with SQL injection method. It's where a hacker uses an SQL command that can trick the site into logging them in as an admin without needing a password, and then they could steal user data or even wipe the database entirely. DNS poisoning. Normally, websites are stored using really long addresses, but thanks to DNS or domain name system, you don't need to remember any of that. But hackers can actually poison the DNS by changing the address of a website you want to visit to a different one. So let's say you type paypal.com, you will land on a fake PayPal website that they already prepared. And when you write down your passwords, it may say error or something went wrong, but actually your credentials have been sent to the hacker. Basically, this is like typo squatting, but worse, because even if you get the name right, you will still go to a fake website in the end. And this can happen after you visit or click something on an adult site, online gambling platform, or pirated movie sites. Drive-by download. A drive-by download is where malware is automatically downloaded onto your device. Usually it's from ads that pop up, and even if you don't click it, it might eventually install a backdoor, which is malware that can bypass the system without inserting a password. And this will likely happen if you use an outdated browser. Cross-site scripting. Cross-site scripting is a method of injecting malicious code into a trusted website. When other users visit the site, the code runs in their browsers without them realizing. For example, imagine a blog about car brands that doesn't properly filter its comment section. A hacker drops a hidden script into a comment section. So when you visit the page, the script activates, making your account automatically make fake comments or even like or dislike the post even though you didn't do it. IoT exploitation. This is when hackers take control of Internet of Things devices, like smart TVs, speakers, or security cameras, and use them for spying. This is common in some authoritarian countries like China, Russia, and North Korea. So a protest organizer might feel safe planning from home, but actually their smart TV might be recording their meetings because it's been hijacked by the government. That's why it's not a surprise when someone gets arrested or simply disappears. Zero-day exploit. A zero-day exploit occurs when hackers exploit an unknown vulnerability in software or an operating system, and no fix exists until the developer releases a new patch. In fact, there was a zero-day exploit called Stuxnet Worm in 2010, which targeted Iran's nuclear facilities. So Stuxnet utilized flaws in the Windows operating system and industrial control software, causing centrifuges to spin out of control and break. Supply Chain Attack a supply chain attack is when hackers target a software or operating system update instead of hacking people's devices one by one. It can be from phishing an employee at the developer's company, stealing their login credentials, and sneaking malicious code into the update. And the customers, which could be businesses or even governments, won't know that the update is a large-scale spying on their organizations. Oh yeah, talking about operating systems, I made a cool video about every operating system explained, so don't forget to watch it, okay?